welcome back guys. So I want to make a video on how I like to fish the marsh system on a kayak. I've been getting a lot of questions from you guys asking me how do I fish a kayak, what gear do I use, what kayak do I use when I'm in the marsh, what do I look for. So pretty much it all encompasses that one big question on how do I fish the marsh with a kayak. So this video that I'm making today is more aimed towards the beginner fisherman or woman that wants to get into marsh fishing with a kayak. The first thing I do is check the wind and I check the weather. So when I check the wind and I check the weather, I like to use two different apps. The first one is the wind finder app and the other one is a weather channel app. And I'm going to look at the Freeport Surfside Beach area around 10 miles per hour sustained with the gusts up to 16 miles per hour. As a rule of thumb, I will not go out fishing if the winds sustained winds are above 15 miles per hour because from my experience anything above 15 miles per hour and you're on a kayak doesn't make your day pleasant at all. We notice that it's going to be a southeast wind so I probably want to fish a marsh that's going to protect me that has kind of a southeast shoreline I guess per se. Next I'm going to open up the weather channel app and then I am going to search for Freeport and then I am going to look at the time that I think I'm going to get the marsh probably around 6 ish and I am looking at 20 percent 7 a.m. is 25 percent of chance of rain the borderline for me is 60 percent if I see on the weather app that there's a 60 percent chance of rain or thunderstorms I will not go out at all it's early early in the morning <laughs> and I'm going to show you guys how I load my kayak into my truck. I do recommend you buy a truck extender. Now what you want to do is you want to secure your kayak to your extender and to your truck. I use two different straps. These are the Home Depot Husky, I don't know, locking straps I guess, ratchet straps, one inch in width. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to strap it in the rear and I'm going to strap it in the front and that's it. That's all I do. Okay, I got everything loaded man. So let's go over exactly what gear and accessories and tackle that I carry on the kayak when I go marsh fishing with my kayak. I like to keep everything light and efficient being as lightweight as possible so i don't carry much stuff compared to the other kayakers so real quick let's go over what i have so on my kayak i carry a pair of pliers i carry a pair of scissors i carry my bogo grip i have my paddle inside this little storage area on the hobie outback i carry my battery some leader line this is the leader line that i like to use a fluorocarbon seager 10 pound i have my my kayak net, I carry a Yeti one gallon um, jug full of ice water, my bump board to measure my fish, and then we have the Hobie crate which I absolutely love. I have a Ram Tube 2008 rod holder with a uh, Ram Ball one and a half inch Ram Ball mount, and I have the Hobie kayak cart. I carry two tackle boxes, that's it. This is my main tackle box here. This is where I carry my paddle tail of choice, which is the Hoagie Swimming Jack. Three most useful colors that I use the most here on the Texas coast. It's the black chartreuse, pearl with chartreuse, and then this is the June bug or the purple with chartreuse. And then I have a few bugs fishing lures, which you guys know I absolutely love. I carry the Hydra bug. I have the click bait. And I have the curl tail, the famous curl tail. And this is where I keep all my top waters, as well as my floating Yozuri's susp suspending baits, the um, the Strike Pro, Hunchback small, and the medium size one. I carry pretty much it, guys. That's that's all I carry for tackle. Okay, let's go over the rods real fast. This is my bread and butter. This is a light action, custom rod with the Shimano Metanium DC. This is the 7.4 gear ratio, um, so it's pretty quick. I have tied on to it Power Pro, Shimano Power Pro 10 pound braided line. And I showed you, at, I showed you guys at the end, I, I, do, I do fluorocarbon. 
And this is the 10 pound fluorocarbon Seeger that I have tied to the braid via uni to uni. And this is my main go-to. This is what I always start off with, a swimming jack. This is the 1 8 ounce Bass Assassin swimming hook that pairs really nicely on a swimming jack. And 1 8, 1 8 ounce is what I use and that's the weight I go for when I'm kayak fishing the marsh. This is actually a little bit heavier. This is a medium light action rod that I use for my top waters and my Hunchback Strike Pro. Also have the Shimano Metanium DC along with 10 pound Power Pro braid. But Shimano Metanium DC, I think this is the same gear ratio as my ma main bread and butter rod and reel. This is 7.4 to 1 I believe. I have the Strike Pro, which I think I'm going to change this out and put a top water like the um, She Dog or maybe the Spook Junior. This is a custom ultra light action rod that I use for my bugs fishing lures. Like, for example, I have the clickbait. This is the 1 8 ounce clickbait that's tied to it. I have the Shimano Aldebaran 51 HG, so I believe the gear ratio on this is also. I think 7.4 the one but this is a super ultra light rod i have it i have five pound shimano power power pro braid tied onto it and at the end i have 10 pound fluorocarbon seeger leader uni uni the knot to my braid and this is a really really high end nice setup that i'm able to flick very light lures or pretty much any bugs lures because bugs lures tend to be pretty light from 1 16th ounce, 1 16th ounce and up. So this is what I like to use. This is my spinning reel setup. This is also a custom spinning rod that I had built for me. Um, this would equate to, I would say a medium light, probably a medium light action rod that's able to handle a 1 8 ounce, minimum 1 8 ounce lure if I need to. I have the Shimano Stratic CI4 Plus 1000 I have tied on here is 10 pound Shimano Power Pro braid and I have a popping cork set up on this but sometimes um, I will tie on a Bugs fishing lure like the Bugs Curl Tail 1 8 ounce and this will fling it no problems at all. So there you go guys my four rod setups that I like to use like I said usually I carry only three but today I'm carrying four just to show you guys my arsenal. Um, if you guys are not interested in getting custom rods made, then I guess this is my bread and butter. If you're going to buy a rod that's um, off the rack, this would equate to a rod that's a light action that's able to throw a minimum of 1 8 ounce uh, weight um, up to, I believe, a quarter ounce. And don't forget your personal flotation device. You need one. I highly recommend don't go kayak fishing without one. I just got here to the marsh. And I've been scanning the water, so guys, I encourage you guys when you're heading out to your destination, make sure you scan the waters and try to look for bait. On my way here, I actually, unfortunately, didn't really see much bait activity. I looked for frantic bait, ripples in the water that just, they just start away all of a sudden, or you'll see them jump out of water in frantic mode. That usually entails that something is chasing them. But unfortunately, I didn't see anything, so... With that in mind, I'm going to start off with a paddle tail. This is my bread and butter rod and reel setup as I showed you earlier with the Hoagies Swimming Jack, the Black Chartreuse. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to blind cast this shoreline parallel to it. In my opinion, the three things that you need to look for when you're searching for uh, the game fish is you need to look for bait, you need to look for structure, and you need to look, you need to look for water current. So the marsh is your structure. The inflow of tide is your water movement and bait usually hang around the grass line here or around structure like this or sometimes they'll just hang out in the middle of maybe the channel if it's not deep there might be oyster there that they're just hanging around so always be scanning looking for weird ripples in the water looking for bait. Bait is going to be your main thing that you need to target because when there's bait the predatory fish follow. So what I like to do is I like to cast parallel to the shoreline and I just do a straight retrieve just like this. No different, just a straight nice retrieve. That's the way to work these lures man, just a straight retrieve. Let the, let the lure do the work, you know what I mean? 
the pedal tail, the swimming jack, <laughs> it, it moves, man. It has a lot, a lot of action. Now, sometimes if the going gets tough and I'm not getting anything on a straight retrieve, what I'll do is I'll retrieve and I'll pop, pop like that, or I'll pop, pop. And see, now I'm stuck on oysters, see, because I let it drop on the ground. But that's what I like to do if the straight retrieve ain't working. <clears throat> so mix it up, guys. Find out exactly what the fish want. Uh, you just got to kind of experiment or experiment, yeah, experiment the different retrieves and see exactly what they want. See, this shoreline right here has a lot of oyster. I'm getting caught up. So with that in mind, I'm just going to do a faster retrieve so I don't get hung up. Okay, here's a nice little drain that I'll, I'll cast a few times to work. Um, drains usually hold redfish, it holds flounder, so therefore I'll have my retrieve a little bit slower so it kind of bumps the ground. Um, I know there's not oyster here because I fished here before, but so what I, like I said, I'll cast inside the drain there and I'll cast within parallel of the apex of the drain, the corners, see if I can get a bite. All right, let's switch it up. Let's use the the bugs clickbait here, imitation shrimp. As I said earlier, I've been seeing some shrimp pop. And this is a good lure to kind of search and destroy too, in a way. Uh, you can fish it all different ways. You can fish it with a straight retrieve, but the best way to do it is retrieve and pop, pop, retrieve, pop. Give it different um, cadences because it's called clickbait because it has some beads on it. So therefore it makes a rattling noise when you pop it. There we go, nice, small little red. Nice little red. Oh, come on, buddy. Yeah, just kind of blind casting him at that little cove there. Oh, nice, nice flounder. Get in that, my friend. Yes, look at that keeper flounder. Check it out, guys. I was using the paddle tail, but went ahead and decided to use the quick bait, and it paid off. 16 and a half. Beautiful fish, man. Blind casting. Let me show you guys right here. I was just cruising along here blind casting the shoreline and he happened to sit right here in his little cove and the clickbait got him. That's pretty much all, man. All I did was throw, retrieve, pop, pop, let it hit the ground, retrieve, pop, pop, and he hit it on the drop. That's it. Oh, another good point, guys, is look for birds, man. Birds are your friends. If you find a bird like just sitting on the shoreline, most likely he's hunting bait. There we go. Oh, no, I thought I felt something. No, there we go. Got him. Got him. Yep, I knew it. It's a redfish. Small little red. But yeah, look for uh, birds and um, they'll tell you where the bait's at, man. Kind of cast in that general area and uh, your ratio, your, your hookup ratio will be better. Come on in the boat, buddy. He may make it, guys. I think he's going to be right at 20. Nose on the board. Pinch tail right on 20. Look at that. Bam. Right there. Bam. 20 inches. I didn't know he was there. I just blind casted this cove area once again. Pop, pop, retrieve, pop, pop, and he hit it right on the downfall. Oh, there we go. Nice, nice, nice. There we go. Oh, stay on, stay on. Oh, I had him. Dang it. Dang it, that was a good red. Kind of blind casted towards where I hit him at the beginning and uh, he hit it again. I guess he really didn't know he was hooked on, but yeah, boy, that's what I'm talking about. And this time I got him on the hoagies swimming jack 20 and a half inch almost 20 and three quarters nice size red just a little bit bigger than the first one we caught but i am gonna take him heck yeah boy that's what i'm talking about and that there folks is how you fish the marsh Ladies and gents, you spend a lot of money on your kayak, your fishing equipment, your tackle, your lures. So after a hard day in the marsh with all that nasty brackish water, make sure you take good care of it. And this is how I take care of my stuff.
Fellas, made it back home okay. So really quick guys, quick, quick, quick reminder, listen up. This video I made today shows you guys how I like to fish the marsh on the kayak from beginning all the way to end. Now, is this the only way to fish the marsh on a kayak? Of course it is not. Listen man, this, this video I made today is more geared towards a beginner kayaker that wants to get into marsh fishing. Use this as a guide to help you get there like a stepping stone per se. Time on the water is going to make you a better angler in a marsh. So hopefully, hopefully, the aim of this video was to help you get to that point. All right, ladies and gents, that's going to be it for me today, man. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you also leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. I would like to hear what you think about this video. Also, if you want to send me an email for suggestions or ideas or anything, send me an email. My email address is in the description box below. Also, you can send me a personal DM through Instagram on my Instagram account, rx underscore angler. And yeah, that's going to be it. Oh, please, please make sure you subscribe to help the channel grow. All right, that's going to be it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.